guy you see there, you likely know him as the Onk Doc, and he has a huge plan to help change how people view cancer. His reach on TikTok is enormous. And just as that app redefined the way we use social media in 2020, Dr. Sanjay Janeja could redefine how doctors can deliver their message of health. I can't talk right now. To the world, he's the hip, informed, approachable, lovable Onk Doc with a social media following racing toward half a million viewers. Hey there, my name is Dr. Sanjay Juneja, also known as the Ankh Doc on TikTok and Instagram. Drpedia.com delivers his impeccable credentials, trained and triple specialized in internal medicine, hematology, and oncology. He's upfront about a doctor's scariest diagnosis that he tries to make not so scary. Sometimes it's a beast, but it's the difference of having a beast in a room and you're in the corner not knowing how to handle it versus the beast kind of being on a collar and chain and in the corner of the room it exists, but you, are, you, you know, own it. When we met, I told him I thought he was in Beverly Hills, not Baton Rouge, being a social media superstar. But there we were in the clinic where he and his wife, Lauren Genesia, work side by side and where his TikTok viewers see him every day hanging on his every educational post like one recently that rapidly went viral. Ooh. Ooh. What? I think over a million views in 72 hours and so many people just saying like, wow, like I should ask my doctor about this or I should get blood work because I have these, you know, symptoms. Any social media creator would say it's all about the lighting for the video quality. Course, so right. and then you have something <laughs> exactly. like that. And he has a global classroom. And then you just kind of sit here and do this talk or, you know, you got to do the doctor voice this way sometimes or you perfect for a guy who can entertain and inform and who grew up wanting to be a teacher inspired by those who taught him. Yeah, I had a really cool um, science teacher in middle school <coughs> here, actually, Dr. Duvall, and uh, he probably I mean, he has no idea of this story, but um, but he kind of made me want to do and teach science because I realized like when you can really understand and appreciate the things around you, like in a physics capacity and, and just understand how they all work. You can just kind of appreciate day to day, you know, things more. After a bad car wreck in high school, his doctor helped him set his life's path. And lost my eyesight basically for um, a couple of weeks, really, with all the dilation and everything like that. It was traumatic from from the accident. I was kind of looking in hindsight uh, and wondering, like, why wasn't I scared? And I realized it was my uh, ophthalmologist, Dr. Grenier. He just kind of gave me goals. So that's what made me really decide to do medical school. I felt that cancer specifically, I had several experiences with families and patients. Uh, cancer specifically is so intimidating and so derailing psychologically, not just for the patient, but the family. And I felt like where else is it more important than to be able to kind of help the headspace with education and empowerment and all these things and be there for them uh, than in the field of oncology. Um, so that's what kind of led me there. I just really value and have come to value quality because whether you cure somebody or not, we all pass away. So if the process is two years to cure or not cure, day-to-day -day quality of life is very important. I'll put TikTok up and then I'll put one of my videos and basically we just rock and roll. So we As for that TikTok Instagram global classroom, he says something that just happened while still in med school and that took off and gave him access to anyone, anywhere. And then I started getting followers into the thousands and that's where, I'm not sure what came to me exactly, but I was like, well, let's not do all of this in vain. I guess in Indian culture, we have this concept of like balance. So if you have like a lot of like attention and followers and people are saying, oh, this is great, you wanna kind of balance that out with something to do some good into the world. Otherwise it's unhealthy. The first thing I started speaking on um, was, uh, cancer screenings. There's a lot of screening that isn't being done nearly as much as it should. So with like CT lung screening, so that applies to unfortunately just smokers right now. Hopefully the data shows it'll benefit non-smokers. So you get a low dose CT chest uh, image to see if you have an early cancer. It goes back to the concept of quality of life is so important. You know, with oncology you realize it's just so finite. If you could change the trajectory of their quality of life with just one TikTok video, I mean, that's huge in the number of people you can reach. So you're not necessarily giving a diagnosis or telling someone how to cure something they have. Right. You're posing questions that they may have themselves, it seems like. Yes, and I'm really glad, you know, 
you said that because that is important. Like there's so much stuff out there on the World Wide Web, right? 1990s, whenever it came out, with all this information that's saying, you have this, you have this, you need to do this. And fact and fiction is not regulated at all. I just kind of put it out there just like they would if they Googled it or if they went to you know, these other sites that are, that are said to give medical information. It's just an extra uh, piece of information that they can take to then you know, optimize their health. The point is, you have to understand something to get enthusiastic about it. So that's what I think and I'm hoping this does. By the time we get our first history and physical, you know, as an adult, we're 21, 22, and we just kind of get a lot of things thrown at us. But kids and teenagers are on social media now, so when this health stuff is popping up, even if you're not following me and kind of annoyed that it's popping up, you're learning stuff that one thing may click and say, ooh, that's interesting how the blood relates to your energy or your shortness of breath, or that's interesting that, you know, whatever those things are. Now you have people interested in learning about health at an early age. So then you would think that they're really more proactive when they do get into their 20s and 30s, whereas otherwise, you know, people, even my generation, we didn't have that background because there was no social media and you only knew what you read, you know, yourself out of a textbook. Well, he is way more than you'd read in a textbook. And he's also a coveted speaker on the national stage. Can you be more impressed about somebody? I mean, I wasn't. He's amazing.